What's going on, everyone? So today we play these Sacramento Kings, and Lakers got to go get that W, right? Sacramento is a team that can absolutely light us up. They're the number one team offensively last season with just over 120 points per game. They are on pace to be that again this year. They put up 130 in their first game of the season and then put up like 113 uh, against the Golden State Warriors the other night, 114 against the Golden State Warriors, and then, like I said, put up 130 against the Utah Jazz. They're a team that can get going and get going fast. Lakers got a lockdown defensively. And also score the basketball. But LeBron James, right? Big question. What are we going to do with LeBron James? Is he going to continue his minute restriction? Now, obviously, that would be best for LeBron and the longevity of the season and keeping him healthy come the playoffs. Now, I believe that it should be uh, a discretionary thing, right? If, you know, you need LeBron and the game's tight down the stretch and it's like, hey, LeBron, we're going to have to play you then we're going to have to play him, right? But we need other guys to start stepping up. LeBron shouldn't, this team is too talented, too deep, too skilled for us to have to play LeBron James 35 minutes just to squeak out a win, right? We should be winning these games. And Sacramento, look, Sacramento, they're going to want to win. They're one and one. They're coming off of a loss at home to the Warriors. So they're not going to want to lose back-to-back home games. And they are terrible defensively. Terrible. So if this, if there was ever a game that our guys were going to start hitting shots, it would be against Sacramento Kings. It should be a free lane to the basket all game long because they don't have any real rim protection. Right? Get into Sabonis' chest. Attack him. Our guards need to go and be aggressive. Anthony Davis needs to dominate this game. Go give me 30. Right? And then LeBron... I actually really liked what we saw in the Phoenix Suns game as far as how Darvin Ham approached the sort of minute restriction. Now, it just so happened that, you know, he played so many minutes throughout the course of the game, and then in the fourth quarter, he played the entire fourth. What I would like to see is like a sort of strategic version of that rather than like that's kind of just how it worked out. But like... I'm totally okay with doing something where, like, LeBron plays four minutes to start the game, plays, like, six minutes or seven minutes or something like that. Or let's say five, let's say he plays five minutes in the first quarter, the first five minutes. He plays, you know, like, six minutes, seven minutes, whatever, in the third quarter. So then that puts him at, like, let's say 12 minutes going into halftime. He plays another like five minutes in the third. So now he's at 17 minutes and then he plays the the whole fourth, right? And then that'll bring him to, you know, 29 minutes. You know, maybe, maybe he plays six minutes in the, maybe that's what we do. Maybe we go five in the first, six in the second, right? Seven in the third. And then he finishes out the whole fourth quarter or, you know, maybe it's seven in the second and then six in the third. Right, where what Darvin Ham did is he played, you know, LeBron played his normal minutes in the first half. He only played like two minutes in the in the uh third quarter and then played the entire fourth. Right. So maybe we could do something like that. And then if like let's say let's say we're winning by like ten going into the fourth quarter, then maybe you don't have to play LeBron the entire fourth, right? Let him rest you know, the first, like, three, four minutes or just kind of wait and see how is it going, right? And, and, you know, the first Kings run or whatever team we play. Let's say it's not Sacramento. Let's say it's, you know, somebody else, right? That first run and surge that that team makes in the fourth to where, like, maybe, let's say, again, let's say we're up 10, the team makes a push, they cut it to, like, six or four, and you call that timeout, boom, LeBron, let's go get in there. That's kind of what I'd like to see, right? Where you kind of are pacing his minutes through the first three quarters and then having him close out in the fourth. Because at worst, the the Lakers should be at least able to stay afloat for three quarters against anybody. And you'd still have burst of LeBron. That also might make LeBron more engaged, right? Like rather than him just floating around at times and just, not really 
like just kind of coasting out there, right? Instead of him just kind of being out there coasting, if you kind of give us these little, you know, four, five minute doses of him throughout the course of the game, or maybe you're even kind of like splitting it up, right? Where you're doing like, you know, four minutes here, let him rest for three minutes. Here's another four minutes. Boom. That closes the quarter, whatever, right? Something along those lines. That is something that I I think that might also keep LeBron more invested, more engaged. Cause it's like in that time, he might have that urge of like, okay, well, I still want to go get my 20, right? Like, so if I'm going to play, you know, 15 minutes or whatever through the first three quarters, then I need to make sure that I'm being aggressive, being in attack mode and going and getting my buckets and in the spots that I'm in. And then, you know, because of the fourth quarter, yeah, I'll probably play most of the fourth quarter, if not all of it. But what if we're actually smoking them? And then, you know, now I'm only playing you know, two minutes in the fourth or something like that. Then I'm not going to get my 20, right? Or they just sit me entirely in the fourth. Right now, I'm not going to get my 20. So that might make LeBron a little more engaged, a little more invested in those those spot minutes that he's in. I mean, LeBron's always liked to, at least in the first quarter, kind of get other guys involved. That's always been his thing, where it's like, okay, I can get mine whenever I want. So, you no, know, let me get D'Lo, let me get Reeves, you know, let me get AD going, let me get all these guys going here a little bit. And then I'll trickle in a bucket here and there. Like, you know, I mean, like last year, how many times did we see, you know, LeBron at halftime have like eight points and then finish the game with 30, right? And I mean, even in the Suns game, he had like, what, nine points, I think, going into the fourth and then just took over in the fourth and then finished with 21, right? So... So if that's kind of the plan and that's kind of the approach this season where like, you know, you're kind of sprinkling LeBron throughout the first three quarters and then playing him, you know, more aggressively, more, more, you know, throughout the course of the fourth, then I think that that's kind of how he can approach it, right? Like, let me get everyone going in the first. I'll go get, you know, four points or whatever. I'll, you know, maybe be a little more aggressive in the second go get maybe six points, so that way I finish at least with my double digits, right, because he has that double digit streak that he needs to maintain, so I can get my double digits, go trickle in another, you know, four to six points in the third, I'll kind of allow it to dictate based on, like, what we need from me in the third, and then in the fourth, I'll turn in the, you know, closer LeBron, go down, be aggressive, go and just take over this game and make sure we get the win, because that's kind of what we need, because, Look, I've talked about this before we got into the season. Like, one of the big concerns that I had with this roster is who's going to be our closer down the stretch, right? Now, I figured it'd probably be Austin Reeves, maybe a little bit of D'Angelo Russell. Maybe it's like a by a committee thing where like everybody's kind of chipping in. Anthony Davis, you would ideally like for him to be the closer, but he's also not the initiate, right? You have to set him up and get him the basketball which at times can be tasking. It can be t- difficult, right? Because teams are doing everything they can to make sure AD doesn't get the basketball. Where a guy like LeBron, he's taking it from the inbound and bringing it up the court. Or you have Austin Reeves, who's bringing up the court, and LeBron's getting it, you know, a- up at the top of the key or, you know, at the three-point line. You know, you're not really doing that for Anthony Davis because you want Anthony Davis to establish position down low, right? So LeBron is... If we can keep LeBron fresh enough to where he is the closer, or he's at least fresh enough to turn that on if it needs to be that, then I think that that's the approach for the Lakers, right? Now, if, let's say, Austin Reeves is cooking, right, then LeBron's just going to let Reeves cook. I mean, we saw it in the Memphis series. Like, LeBron's not going to say, okay, well, no, give me the ball. No, he wants to win the game. Right, he could still go get his buckets to make sure he gets his, you know, point total or whatever that he wants. But he's he's going to let Reeves go and and just go get buckets, right? Where, you know, or or D'Angelo Russell or AD or Wood or whoever, right? Like if somebody has it going, you allow them to keep cooking. But if need be, LeBron can say, "Okay, well, I'm fresh enough. Let me go. Let me go close this." You know, hopefully more times than not, he doesn't have to, right? Hopefully more times than not, we're not desperate for LeBron to go and close us out and win this game. Hopefully more times than not, we either have the lead and now we're just kind of maintaining 
or you know somebody else is or you know even if it's not one guy by committee everyone's kind of picking it up and doing what they need to do so that way we can close out and win these games that's kind of my hope that's kind of my approach but I do I like kind of what Darvin Ham did there with LeBron as far as the the Suns game goes and I'd like kind of more of a modified version of that um, going in, going forward. Because I would like to still keep his minutes as low as possible. Again, obviously, if we're starting to get blown out here a little bit uh, in any game, right? Like if the, the lead starts getting a little out of hand, then you got to insert LeBron James. But if it's close, right? If the Lakers are, you know, within five to seven points one way or another, then I think you just kind of stick to the script, right? But if if a team starts like, uh-oh, like we're down 13 now, okay, well, let's let's inject LeBron. And allow him to kind of take over. Just a thought. But anyway, as always, this is a discussion. So I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? Do you agree? Uh, do you think like, yeah, kind of go that approach. Trickle them throughout the first three quarters. Play them heavily in the fourth. Uh, do you think, no, you got to kind of just let them play. Let them play. I ever feel whatever your thoughts are. Love to hear it. Let me know down in the comments below. Being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me out a lot. Let's me know you enjoy these types of videos. And I truly appreciate it. If you're not subscribed to the channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on bell notifications. See you all in the next one. Thank you.